Israel launched devastating airstrikes on Gaza on May 23, while also expressing readiness to resume stalled talks on a truce and hostage release deal with Hamas to pause the war raging since October 7. The Gaza Strip's civil defense agency said two pre-dawn airstrikes had killed 26 people, including 15 children, in Gaza City. Agency spokesman Mahmoud Bossal said one strike hit a family house, killing 16 people in the Eldarish area and another killed 10 people inside a mosque compound. There was no immediate comment from the Israeli military. Fierce street battles also raged in Gaza's Jabalia and Rafah, where the armed wings of Hamas and its ally Islamic Jihad said they had fired mortar barrages at Israeli troops. International pressure for a ceasefire has mounted on Israel and its Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, as three European countries said on May 22 they would recognize a Palestinian state. The week started with the International Criminal Court's prosecutor seeking arrest warrants on war crimes charges against Netanyahu and his defense minister as well as three Hamas leaders. Israel has angrily rejected those moves, voicing disgust over the ICC request enabling any recognition of Palestinian statehood, reward for terrorism. Senior Foreign Ministry official Jacob Blitzstein told the envoys of Ireland. Norway and Spain on May 23 that there will be serious consequences for their relations with Israel after they recognize the state of Palestine next week. But domestic pressure has also risen as supporters of hostages trapped in Gaza again rallied outside Netanyahu's office, passionately demanding a deal to bring them home. A newly released video showed five female Israeli soldiers tied up and some with bloodied faces in the hands of Palestinian militants during the attack more than seven months ago. The three-minute clip, taken from a militant's body camera footage, was released by the Hostage and Missing Families Forum on Wednesday after the Israeli army lifted censorship on it. The footage reveals the violent, humiliating and traumatizing treatment the girls endured on the day of their abduction, their eyes filled with raw terror, the forum said. Mr. Netanyahu vowed to continue fighting Hamas to ensure what we have seen tonight never happens again. But his office also said that the war cabinet had asked the Israeli negotiating team to continue negotiations for the return of the hostages. The previous round of truce talks involving U.S., Egyptian and Qatari mediators ended shortly after Israel launched its attack on Gaza's far southern city of Rafah early in May. Israel went ahead with the assault on the last city in Gaza to be entered by its ground troops in defiance of global opposition, including from top ally, the United States. Israel has since ordered mass evacuations from Rafah, and the UN says more than 800,000 people have fled. We are not smashing into Rafah. We are operating carefully and precisely, Armed Forces spokesman Daniel Hagari said. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said that so far the Rafa operation had been more targeted and limited than feared and has not involved major military operations into the heart of dense urban areas. But he stopped short of saying that Israel had addressed U.S. concerns adding that Washington was closely watching ongoing Israeli actions. His Israeli counterpart Sochi Hanegbi has meanwhile given a bleak assessment of the war to a meeting of Parliament's Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee. According to a report by Israel's Channel 13, he reportedly said that Israel has not achieved any of the strategic aims of the war, not conditions for a hostage deal, we haven't toppled Hamas and we haven't allowed residents of the Gaza periphery to safely return home. The bloodiest ever Gaza war broke out after Hamas's unprecedented attack on October 7 resulted in the deaths of more than one. 170 people, mostly civilians, according to an AFP tally of Israeli official figures.
militants also took 252 hostages, 124 of whom remain in Gaza, including 37 the army says are dead. Israel's retaliatory offensive has killed at least 35,800 people in Gaza, mostly women and children, according to the Hamasran Territory's health ministry. Heavy fighting raged again in Gaza, where the military said troops in Rafah had dismantled a number of tunnel shafts and launches in the area and eliminated several terrorists during close quarters encounters. Urban combat has also fled again in northern areas, including Jabalia, which Israeli forces first entered several months ago. We hear nothing but the sound of explosions and gunfire. Said Mahmoud El Sharif, 31, in Jabalia's adjacent refugee camp. Dr. Mohamed Soleh, the acting director of Al Oda Hospital, one of just two in northern Gaza that the UN says are still functioning said it was under Israeli siege for a fifth straight day. Soldiers are present in the hospital's courtyard and in nearby houses, he said, adding that there was continuous gunfire and shelling towards it. The Gaza Interior Ministry said that senior Hamas commander Dear Eldin El Sharafa had been killed by an Israeli airstrike in central Gaza, in a rare acknowledgement from the Hamas government of a high-ranking fatality. Israel has imposed a siege on Gaza that has deprived the territory's 2.4 million people of most clean water, food, medicines and fuel. The sporadic arrival of aid by truck slowed further after Israeli forces closed the Palestinian side of the Rafah border, crossing with Egypt. UN Palestinian Refugee Agency UNRWA Chief Philippe Lotsarini said Israeli authorities while prioritizing the private commercial sector at Karam Shalom, the other crossing into southern Gaza. While private goods are welcome, he said most Gazans are desperate after seven months of war and cannot afford goods at their current market prices.